Grief is a natural response to losing someone or something that's important to us. We may feel a variety of emotions ranging from sadness to loneliness, and you might even experience it for a number of different reasons. But the truth is, we will always miss the presence of that loved one. But the Bible assures us in Revelations 21, 4, and, the, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, nor shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And then we know that we will see them again. Thanks for joining us on Heart to Heart. For the next couple of minutes, we will be having some intimate sessions on the program. Our guest today shares her journey through grief and breaking some myths and beliefs people have regarding grief. Don't go away. We will be right back after this. Lorenzo, I'm gonna go back to California in 18 days. I wanna take my money with me. to you in the name of the Lord of Hosts. Whether it's movies, music, cartoons, documentaries, or lifestyle, there's always something for everyone. It's time to switch to an all-in-one family entertainment channel. Watch these amazing shows on Flame TV Star Times Channel 187 and on YouTube at Flame TV Online. It's time to be on fire. My guest today is a certified emotional intelligence and anger management specialist. She's a mental health first aider, trained in addiction handling, social psychiatry, adverse childhood experience, and motivational interviewing with the Sam Obafemi Behavioral Change Academy. She's a life coach and grief support counselor. She's also the author of We Save Your Name, a memoir on her journey through loss. Welcome with me, Dorothy. Hearsay. Did I get that? Yes, you did. I struggled. I said I was going to ask you so I don't pronounce it wrong. But when, when, my, when, when my, my, my colleague said uh, hearsay, I just need to talk. How are you doing? Fine, Good to you. have you around. It's an honor to be here. You're welcome. Thank so you. So you've written an amazing book, We Say Their Name, and it's more of your story. Yes. Your story, your journey through the loss of your husband. Would you want to tell us? The story. Okay, so um, in 2018, okay. November to be precise, um, my husband of nine years plus died suddenly. Okay. And um, that was how the journey started. It was a rude shock, it was unexpected, it was heartbreaking to okay. say the least. And I found myself on this journey of being a widow, being a single parent, and, um, okay, I actually prefer saying a lone parent. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because, yes, um, a single parent means there's a, another parent somewhere. Yeah. So this is just lone parenting. parenting. Yes, yeah, so, um, and that led me to, write in to writing this book. So tell me what happened, or let me help you kickstart. So when you talked with me, you said it was on this Saturday, right? Yes. You were supposed to go out for an event. When I shared the story with someone, that first part, I think women will always like one pot, we always <laughs> like one new spoon, something in the kitchen. We had to go for an event, and the first few persons to be at the event at the particular time will get a new set non or non -stick frying pan. pan. Yes. <laughs> and you were hurrying to get that. So tell me what, let's pick the story up from there. From there, okay. Yeah. So um, this event was organized by a group in which I'm part of, and one of the incentives was those that will come early will get that set of non stick frying pans and I needed who doesn't want a non-stick frying pan? <laughs> I needed non-stick frying pan. So I was rushing to go for it. And then uh, my husband, his name is Yakubu, and then he says that he wants to eat his favorite meal, which is Ton Shinkafa and Egusi soup. Rice yes, meal rice meal okay. and Egusi soup. And I was like, ah, 
there's no time. This thing will take like two hours. I'm running late. And he insisted, which in hindsight is very strange for him mm. because usually he'll just ask what's available, what can we have? Yeah. And then maybe when I list all the things at home, like, okay, let me have this. If it's not available, he might say, okay, don't bother. Or he won't go and get it outside, okay. restaurant or something. But that day he insisted and he wanted it. So I grudgingly <laughs> made it, you know, and cooked, sent to the market, got everything ready and rushed, got ready for my event. And then I came downstairs and then I didn't see the car. So I was asking them at home, where is Dada? They said he went out. I said he went out. And he knows I'm supposed to be at this place. I'm already late. All that's so why I called a cab. And the cabman was finding it difficult to trace the house. So I just told him, okay, wait by the gate, the gate by the uh, main road. I'll just walk out and meet you. And I was walking out, you know, I was angry. I was upset. I was like, ah, now he's going to make me go late. And honestly, I don't even like going late for any event. So, but uh, something, you know, a prompting. Yeah. They said, call him which I did, and I called him and he heard me trying to give the description to the cab, cab guy. And then he said, where are you? I said, I'm by the gate. Now, why are you talking to? I said, I'm talking to the cab guy. Stop the cab. I said, no, 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 wait for me. I'm on my way back. And I told the cab guy to go. I was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but he left. So I stood by the gate. I waited for him. And then so a few minutes later, he came. And, you know, he was like, ah, sorry, that he had to go to the mechanic, my... Um, designer shade, sunshades. Yes, my designer <laughs> sunshades, please, <laughs> was in the car. The car had been with the mechanic. And I kept telling him, let your mechanic not carry my shades I give his girlfriend. Who, his designers, <laughs> not the one I bought him, hold up. <laughs> you would think he's just an ordinary one, you know? So he came back and he was like, take your glasses. Before you see my mechanics too, your glasses, you know, then he had picked up laundry. So because he was walking in, he left the laundry on the, in the car okay. and just gave me the car keys. And I zoomed off, bye, bye, you know. So when he gave me the glasses, I wore it immediately. And he was like, ah, you're not even waiting. And the last thing I said to him was, life is short, you know, so like enjoy it while So life you can. is short, we'll take a pause there and I'll be right back. Hello, everyone. Have you ever come face to face with a question? Before you say, I do. Should I have sex? Hopefully you'll be able to give us the answers that. It's a young man, I see you. I prophesy that that thing that kill your father will not kill you. I could not say amen because my father <laughs> is still alive. Go Rolly, go, go Rolly. Just, just do it, do it. <laughs> Living the life. Yes, it is. Okay, so you said life was short. Let's go. Yes, it up um, so you know, I told him life is short. He laughed, I laughed, and I drove off. I went for the event, and we were chatting. Of course, he asked me, did you get the frying pan? I said, when I got there, I was like number 100 or yeah. something. <laughs> so, of course, I didn't get the pans. The events didn't start early, it was supposed to start like 12.30, it didn't start till like past two. Yeah. Yes, they had some technical issues. So by the time it was on the way, I knew, because I told him four latest, I'll be back, 4 p.m. So I, we were chatting and I told him, ah, it's just starting, so I might be a bit later. Okay. The whole event went through, we finished around six. So, and you, then, so you now go home? You came yes, back home? Yes, I got home okay. and then went upstairs, wanted to go into the room, my phone had died, the battery ran out. And then the room was locked. So I tried calling, knocking on the door and telling him I was the one. Sometimes he locks the door when he's at home with the children so that they don't disturb mm -hmm. him. But they were at my neighbor's for a party. So he didn't answer. My, my younger brother was downstairs. So I went down, I was asking him, he said, what of your home? He said he didn't even know he was home, that since he came back, nobody, and they, Children were out, so yeah. he thought no one was home, and he just stayed in the sitting room. He was watching TV, and then he slept off. So he gave me his charger. I charged my phone. I now 
went upstairs because I noticed that he didn't eat his food. His food was still the, the he, meal. The meal I made, him. yes, it was still in the food flask on the dining table. So I went to my neighbor's house and I was asking my cousin that went with my children. Yeah. I said, Dad, I didn't eat. She said that when he came back, he went upstairs. So she told him that food was ready. He said he would come down. So they left for the birthday party. And then I went upstairs, tried knocking, and then tried calling his phone. That was when I heard his phone ring in, in the bed. bathroom. Okay. Because we don't even lock our room door if we're going out. Okay. So I started shouting, calling my brother and telling him that he's inside. Because I said, one, if he had gone out and left his phone, yeah. The door won't be locked, and then he would have used someone's phone to call me and tell yeah. me, you won't get through to me, my phone is at home. Okay. So I told him, I said, no, he's inside. I could hear the TV on, the AC was on. So my brother, his friend came, so they tried to break down the door, the door couldn't. So they got um, a ladder okay. from the gatehouse so that they could climb through the veranda up into the room. So I came into the house. And um, our security was the one that was smallish. Okay. So he was the one that came up. And I just told him, don't switch on the light. It was already past seven, so it was dark. Okay. And I told him, just open the door. He came in, he opened the door, he left. So I walked into the room. And then I looked around. I didn't see anyone. And I switched on the light. And I saw his clothes laid on the bed, like he went to have his bath. Then I walked to the bathroom. Okay. I still didn't switch on the bathroom light. I just pushed the door open and that was when I saw his form mm. on the floor. You know, and I started screaming again. I was calling my brother. I said, he's here. He's here. They were trying to take back the ladder. Okay. So I switched on the lights and then I just, he was lying face down okay. on the floor. And then I just sat down on the floor. You know, I touched him. He was warm. He wasn't breathing, and then he was face down. And so I was trying to like get him to turn, yeah. you know, breathe. Maybe that's why you're not breathing and all that. So my brother came in with his friend. His friend is a pharmacist. So my brother pulled me back to the room. Then his friend checked. And I was in the room and I saw his friend shake his head. But he just came out and he just told me, um, they call me Medeski, so he just said, um, Medeski, he fainted. I need to go and get a doctor to resuscitate him. But that but was just all to get your mind away from. That was just to get my mind, you know. So I just nodded. So he left. He called my brother out and told my brother not to allow me back into the bathroom. So my brother told me to stay in the room. I said, OK. He left. I went back into the bathroom. I sat down. I touched him. I looked at him. It, it felt surreal. Mm. So it was like I was having an out-of-body experience mm. that I could see me sitting down because it just didn't seem like it was happening. It yeah. didn't seem real. So, you know, I just started praying. I was crying. I was just talking to God. I was like, God, no. First, I, I was talking to him. I said, oh, wake up. This is not the plan. These children, when we see them, grow to yeah. be what God said they will be and who God said they will be. They will, we, we walk your daughter down the aisle. Mm. Wake up, you know. So I was telling God, I was like, you did it for Lazarus. Yeah. Do it, me. I will go and give testimony and actually say he fainted. You know, with no doubt in my mind, you know. I was crying, I was praying. And then I just heard in my spirit, not your will, mm. but mine. And from, immediately I heard it, I just switched my prayer mm. from asking God to bring him back to just praising God, thanking God for How his life. How easy is it for you to just switch like that? No, and... it's not. If, if, like right now, yeah. you know, anytime I talk about it, I know that it's, it wasn't by my strength. Mm. I, I can't, you know, I, I was telling people that if anybody had told me this or painted this scenario yeah. before that day, I'll tell them that you just come and find my dead body beside his own. So it's, it's, it has never been mm. by my strength. It has never been me. But somehow I just found that immediately that dropped in my spirit, I switched. There was no doubt 
in my mind, I switched and just started praising God, you know, thanking him for his life, thanking him for our nine years of marriage, mm -hmm. thanking him for two children, thanking him for 19 years of friendship, because mm -hmm. I knew my husband 10 years before we got married yeah. for nine years plus. So it was 19 years. And I was just there. I don't know how long I was there. I just kept my hand on him and I was just singing praises to God till I felt hands lift me up when he came with the Why doctor. Why the title, We Say Their Name? Okay, so the title, We Say Their Name, so when I found myself on this journey, one of the significant things I realized was, or I noticed, was that anytime I mentioned Yakubu's name, mm. people got uncomfortable. People would look everywhere else. People would look like they wished I did not say the name. Mm. You know, if we were having a conversation and I just said, hey, you know, like that time Yakubu, and then the conversation just goes down. Yeah. And then nobody knows how to. And you know, so I would laugh. You, you, I think you know there's something around here where it's like when someone passes, please don't mention yes, their name. Yes, yes. You know, like I that. noticed people take down pictures, people close albums, people remove clothes. Any reminder of the person that died, yeah. they do away with it. And for me, I found that all all reminders yeah. actually bring me comfort, bring me healing, because he lived. He he lived. He left a legacy. So because he's not here doesn't mean we that are here will not honor his memory, that legacy. So we say their name is an encouragement to people, not just widows, anybody that has lost anyone. Mm. It's okay. Because in my conversation with people that are going through loss and grief, I found out that they actually want to talk about the people that have died right. in their lives. But well, maybe they, our culture does not really yes, permit. Yes, our, our culture doesn't. You know, it's death, loss, sadness. We'd rather not. It's part of life, but yeah. we don't talk about it. We don't want to feel sad. We don't want to go there. Yeah. So we'd rather just pack it up and keep it aside. So that was what brought about the name. All right, we'll take a break. And when we come back, the conversation will continue. Welcome back to the program. I've been talking with Dorothy Hearsay on her book, We Say Their Name, a memoir on her journey through the loss of her husband. I can't exhaust this whole topic today or the story today, but you can follow Dorothy on her social media handles and get a copy of We Say Their Name for yourself. You get all the gists in the book. Now, when you look at it, you feel, okay, maybe there isn't so much to be grateful for. It's like the man I have known for 19 years is gone. I remember when you told me that when reality started hitting you was when you had to look for a new school for the children, when you had to buy a bag for yourself. Yeah. You might look at it sometimes and someone will feel there's nothing to be grateful for, but I'm sure there's something you're grateful to God for. <laughs> there's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot that I'm grateful to God for. I'm grateful to God for support. You know, my support system has, and still is, mm -hmm. very solid. My family, my friends, my colleagues, my classmates. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody just rallies around. Everybody's always checking in. Mm -hmm. How are you? How are the kids? What's happening? How can we help? And all that. So. Even when I had the book reading and book signing, that was the same thing. People were chipping in, what can I do? What do you need me to do? So I'm, I thank God for my support. I thank God for strength. Because when people tell me you're strong, I just look at them like... <laughs> I, I remember today really... you shared the story. Yes. I think I was all drenched in tears. You're the one giving me a handkerchief. You know, and I was like, okay. 
thank you, <laughs> but it's not me. Yeah. It's God. It has always been God. Because the truth is, when you lose someone, it's not as if you have a choice mm -hmm. of being strong or choosing something else. Yeah. So you just find out in your daily walk, every moment, you just find out that you're just doing things that are true to you. And maybe in doing that, you're encouraging and inspiring someone. Yeah. And so that person sees it as, as strength. So yes, I thank God for strength. I thank God for the voice to be able to reach out to someone, the voice to be able to tell other people, especially widows mm -hmm. that are going through this, that yes, like you said, he was your spouse, friend, mine was 19 years, some people 40 years, some three years, mm -hmm. you know, but God is your source. Mm -hmm. God created that spouse for you. Yeah. God numbered his days. So being that voice of saying, this is not the end of your story. This cannot be the end of your story. There is more. You know, you said something about that you're glad that you're an encouragement to someone. I would like you to pray with someone this moment, someone who is grieving. And they'd really, it's really bringing them down. They don't even know how to navigate through the whole situation. Would you like to pray for that person today? I'm sure I will. So for anyone that is grieving, anyone that is going through loss, anyone that just seems or feels like there is no hope, like all is lost, I want to pray with you today and ask that in Jesus' mighty name, that God, the God that grants peace, that grants comfort, would touch your heart this very moment, that you would hold on to God no matter what, that even on days where it seems bleak and dark and as if the storms of life will never stop, that you continue to hold on to God as your source, for he alone knows your heart and he alone will bring you peace and comfort, that you will continue to just have that hope in all things good. Don't look at the problems. Don't look at the bills. I know it's, it's not easy, but when you look up to God as your source, he will always come through for you. Amen. I ask that whatever it is, that peace that surpasses all understanding, that God will lay it in your heart this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dorothy. Thank you for sharing oh. this intimate time, like you said <laughs> earlier, with us, my love to the children and... Yes. We'll meet afterwards for that salad. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. You're welcome. You know, anytime. you can follow Dorothy Hirsey on her social media handles for more details about her book, We Say Their Name. Coming up next is something to inspire you. I realized I loved music when I was about seven or eight. I used to puff my cheeks and play the 12-bar blues. Like, I'd walk around the house doing, like... <laughs> Personally, some of the challenges I encountered um, growing up and just, you know, um, growing in industry, it's, some of it had to do with me proving myself. You, you're young and you're in your teens or your 20s, and you're a blind person and you're saying that you can deliver music at this level. Um, that was obviously a challenge I had to surmount. Let us have a world of ordinary people living life the way God wants us to. Many things obviously give me joy about music. Um, I don't know that I can rank them in any order of preference, but um, the fact that I can use this art form that I love so much to say something meaningful. The fact that it is a tool and it's a very potent, very strong tool in my hands and in the hands of everyone who 
you know, expresses with music as, you know, their, their art form or their, or their form of expression, for me is really exciting because it puts the power in your hands to create and to influence. If I'm to name one thing that I'm passionate about, it would be working towards building a better space for everybody. My name is Kabam Zasukwa. I'm a singer, songwriter, music producer, and media entrepreneur. I'm inspired by a number of things. I'm inspired by the beauty of nature. I'm inspired by God and his love. I'm inspired by kindness, anything in motion, mid-flight, being on a bus and a train in my car. Just everything that warms my heart. What inspires you? Weren't you inspired by that piece with Kobams? Not letting his physical limitations hinder him from fulfilling God's call upon his life. And Dor Dorothy, wow. Nothing really prepares us for the death of a loved one. Whether death results from a sudden accident or a long illness, it always catches us unprepared. But God will never leave us nor abandon us during our times of grief. He would always provide us with love and hope. You know, I like for the fact that Dorothy was able to break out of the mold of some of the ways people have been told or expected to grieve after losing a loved one. It's okay to grieve. We've all lost loved ones, people dear to us, family, friends, but don't let it take over you and you lose yourself to the whole process. I'm so sure if that loved one could speak to you, he or she will tell you to move on and enjoy the best of your life. Our phone lines are open if you need someone to talk with, especially if you are dealing with the loss of a loved one. We have a team of trained counselors who will be there to pray along with you and help you live one day at a time. Well, that's about all we have for you today on the program. If you have been inspired, send us a mail on hearttoheart at cbnigeria.org and let us know. We would love to hear from you. Thank you and so much for staying with us today. We look forward to doing this again with you and we leave you with these words from Psalm 34 verse 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. He cares about everything that bothers you. So, see you next time. See you next time.